pressure on the dollar on the back of uh, what Bernanke said, but, yeah. but, but not that much pressure. And it seems uh, as well in the equity markets that this, this Bernanke bounce is fading a little bit. Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, I guess a lot of what we heard, we'd heard before, but uh, I, I still think for those who, let's say, wanted to buy back the dollar, they might have been hoping for a more, more overt hint that December was still on the table. And whereas you, whereas you say, what he did was, look, 6.5 is a pretty soft threshold. We think we can hold rates for a long time after that, and everything else is data dependent. So it was, it was quite woolly, and, and so we didn't get a massive reaction. But yeah, certainly nothing new, no new triggers to kind of cause a reversal of this dollar weakness that we've seen post Yellen of last week. And, and how much weaker is it going to get? Honestly, I don't think that much more. It feels like euro dollar is getting a little bit toppish. Dollar yen, as well, I think is 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 one that people are struggling to get much below 100 on on an ongoing basis. So I think that just oscillates around 100. So. Broadly, not much more in this, I don't think. And, and what about, uh, let's look at the UK now. What about the confusion that, that, that seems to be forward guidance here <laughs> yeah. and the way the markets are reading that? Um, wh what do you think we're going to get from the minutes or see from the minutes today and how Sterling going to react? I think forward guidance in the UK has always been a little bit woolly from the outset because they had these caveats, didn't they, the inflation ones. In the, in the US, it's just been woolly because they said 6.5 maybe isn't a, right. a line in the sand. I, I think, again, we'll get the same kind of message. They, they seem very keen to say, look, please don't, don't expect rates to go up any time soon. Of course, there's a bit more of a, a battle to be done here in the UK because a lot of the data has been better than expected. Economists are revising up, etc., etc. So I think it's a harder marketing angle for the BOE to pursue than the Fed, where the, where the numbers have been a bit more patchy. But as, a, as an FX trader, how do you, how do you play sterling? Given the uncertainty, given the uncertainty, uh, which way ben, uh, um, Carney's going to go on this? Yeah, I think... I don't think there's going to be a massive sterling angle this today. Ordinarily, I'd say the minutes are a great trigger, but we had the quarterly inflation report last week, so you'd, you'd think that most of the, kind of the, the noise has, has, should already be in the price. So it's only if there's something weird on the vote, which again, I, do, I don't see. So I think you're pretty flat on what you're actually going to, the way you're going to trade sterling, ironically, is you're going to have to trade on the US numbers that we get later in the day. Retail sales, existing home sales, CPI. Yep. Yep. I think generally that might point, point to a little bit of sterling upside, in fact.